we have to describe the concept of space-time. Now we describe the behavior of objects by where they are in 3D space, but also we need to take into account time. And Einstein said that um, 3D space and time is combined to make a, a, what's called 4D, four-dimensional space-time. Of course, we can't represent four-dimensional space-time very easily, but what we do is um, we do one dimension against time, and we use this to describe four-dimensional space-time. We have time being perpendicular to x to the distance. Notice that normally we have distance and time. So this no, this lets you know that a graph of uh, space-time because it's time against distance, rather distance against time. Now let's just think about what Euclidean deep space you, deep space looks like. It's Euclidean. It's flat. Space-time is flat. It's Cartesian. We have this Cartesian. A coordinate structure where all the lines are acting at um, either parallel or 90 degrees to each other. So what does that mean in terms of the behavior of objects? Let's take a static object which is at rest and and it looks like this. It's a line which will move upwards with time. The distance will stay in the same position. So this would be a line showing a static object in Euclidean four-dimensional space-time. What if it has a constant velocity? Well, we know with time it will move upwards again, but it will move at an angle. We know that the distance is changing with respect to time. So this is a line which shows the position as it changes in four-dimensional space-time, uh, which has got a flat geometry space-time. What happens if it's accelerating? Well, you know what an acceleration curve looks like. This is getting faster and faster. So this basically shows us what a static object, what an object at constant velocity, um, which is uh, not zero, and uh, acceleration. You might need to be able to sketch what these lines look like on, um, on an axis like this. What about f movement in four-dimensional space-time? Now, Einstein said that objects try to travel in the straightest possible line in four-dimensional space-time. And, and as we know, the shortest line between two points is basically a, a straight line. If the geometry is flat, if the surface is flat, it's going to be a straight line. We use the term uh, a geodesic as our shortest distance. For example, if you roll a ball on the table, what will happen? It will go in a straight line because the table is flat. The geometry of the table is flat. We have a Euclidean surface where um, it's basically a flat surface. So a ball will, will travel in a straight line. It will also follow a geodesic, which is a, the, the shortest distance between its starting point and its ending point. And light is included. Light, when it's in Euclidean four-dimensional space-time, this will also uh, travel in a straight line. So no problems here. Einstein predicted this would happen, and so did Newton. Now, we have to state this, that the moving objects follow the shortest path between two points in space-time. Um, so we've just discussed that. That's a, a static object, space-time. This is a starting point. This is the final point. And this is the shortest distance between these two points is this geodesic drawn in four-dimensional space-time. And this is a moving object from here to here will follow a straight line or the straightest line in four dimensional space time. This is also a geodesic for that movement of that object. Now, let's go back to what happens to light when it's in an accelerating frame of reference. Remember the woman in the lift, the, the light comes in, the lift is accelerating, so with every moment of time it gets further and further and further displaced with respect to time, so it basically curves down. This is for an accelerating frame of reference. But we also know due to the theory of equivalence of a gravitational a frame of reference, which is in a gravitational field, and an accelerating frame of reference is that they're equivalent. The, uh, what is observed in an accelerating frame of reference will also be the, the same thing will be observed in a frame of reference which is in a gravitational field. So we know that from this that gravity bends light. 
It must do, using the idea of equivalence. But you should also remember that. Remember, light is an absolute value. Light travels at the speed of light, and it travels in the straightest possible line. But then, this is a curve. How can this be the straightest possible line? This is a curve. But we... But the fact is, light does travel in the straightest possible line. This line itself, because space-time here, is actually curved in a gravitational field. Exactly. The space-time itself, near a massive object, is curved. And it's due to the presence of that massive object, of a large amount of mass or energy, itself will distort the shape of four-dimensional space-time. To give a, a nice analogy of this, when you travel from Copenhagen and you go to, let's say, New York, you don't follow this line. This is a straight line, according to an observer looking outside, looking at a, a flat map, looking at a an Euclidean map of the Earth. But the Earth is not Euclidean. The Earth is curved. It's a curved surface. So the, the, the geometry rules do not work in the same way. Um, the path that you take when you take a flight and more is more like this. It curves up and curves down. Now, from our point of view, it looks a bit weird. But if you look at a globe, the straightest path will actually be this curve between these two points. It's difficult to see it on a flat Euclidean surface, but that's the way it is. You need to look at a, 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 um, a sphere to be able to see this. Now, let's describe the concept of space-time, which is near a massive object. So it's no longer Cartesian. We don't have these imaginary lines which are traveling at, uh, are parallel and at 90 degrees. Let's draw an object in free fall. What does an object in free fall do? It, f it curls over like this. Why does it do this? Because you can't see it, but the lines of space-time are actually curved, and this object, which is in free fall, is taking the shortest route from there to there, but, it, but the space-time itself is distorted. So you can't see that this is actually the shortest route from there to there. What about a static object? Um, is that following the shortest route? No, because there's a force which is stopping it from accelerating. So this is actually not the shortest route. So it's difficult to represent it on, on, a, on two dimensions. When we have a massive object, for example here, this is what um, four-dimensional space-time looks like. We've represented it as a, um, a two-dimensional surface which has been warped downwards. Um, but it demonstrates quite clearly, if you wanted to go from the left side to the right side, you obviously can't take this diagonal. What it is from above would be a straight line, because then you would end up going down there. The shortest line would have to go around the surface, like this, or around this side. That would be the shortest uh, way for it to go. And as, as Einstein says, the object, objects must follow the shortest, the shortest possible path. Newton's first law. Objects will move in straight lines unless acted upon by a force. Right. This is uh, th the understanding is what is straight line. To Newton, the universe was flat. It was a Euclidean universe. And so, of course, from one point to another point, it was always going to be a, a straight line as the, as the shortest route. And this point, this path between these two points, is called a geodesic. Now, if you place a massive object in a four-dimensional space-time, it basically warps the geometry of the, the, the four-dimensional space-time. And here we have it. We can, this is represented by, for example, a planet here, and this would be, or, or a moon, or let's say this could be the sun, and this would be a planet moving around. What happens is that the ball is not being attracted to the, the, the sun. The planet is not being attracted by the sun. It's just trying to follow a straight line. The way we see it is that the ball moves around the object as if, the, as if it's attracted to it. It orbits it as if it's attracted to this object, to this yellow object, to the sun. It's not attracted to it. It's just following its geodesic. It's just trying to follow a path. So it basically gets its marching orders, you could say, from the local geometry of the four-dimensional space-time, which is warped by the presence of this mass. So this mass is important in that it warps the space-time, 
and then the 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 curvature of space time will basically dictate to the ball which route it's going to take it's not because it's physically um attracted to that it's just following its orders in a four dimensional space time here we have um another um graphic which shows that this ball will follow an orbit here but this space time is being distorted around the planet around the sun so it will follow an orbit there here here we explain why the a star appears to shift position the light from the star is going in this direction um it goes near the sun where the four dimensional space time is being distorted so it basically follows this contour and then ends up following the earth but from our point of view it looks as if it came from this direction because we're assuming that there is a a flat space time here but it's not it's curved that's why this line um this line curves here and here we have a, a an extreme curvature of space time and this is what we're going to get onto next when we start discussing uh, black holes explain gravitational attraction in terms of the warping of space time by matter newton described large gravitational forces near to lar other large masses and he gave a mathematical uh, model for this f is equal to g m m over r squared but he couldn't explain why the gravity existed why there was a force between massive objects in einstein in einstein in nineteen fourteen he described that, that objects try to follow the shortest path or the geodesics in four dimensional space time and since four dimensional space time is warped near massive objects the object follows the shortest possible path in a warped four dimensional space time and gravity is the effect that we observe as objects travel along the shortest path or the along these geodesics in four dimensional space time so what we see is as if it's been attracted to an object Einstein says that it's trying to follow the shortest line, the, the geodesic, in a warped four-dimensional space-time.